Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Today is seed haul day and I could not be more excited about this. I finally have every single one of the seeds I have ordered sitting right on this table right in front of me right now and I cannot wait to share with you what I bought. I bought from five different seed companies online. I do want to mention before we get into the seed haul, I am not sponsored by any of these seed companies. This is just me sharing my passion for seeds, where I bought them and why I chose each individual company. I think there are pros and strengths to each of these companies and so that's why I purchased from five different seed companies and not just one. I did go out, if you watched, I organized my seeds in these photo container organizers. They come with, I think two, four, six, eight, 16 different photo organizers in here. I did a whole video on it and you can go look at it if you want, but your seed packets fit perfectly in these containers. And in that video, I said, you know what? I don't think I have enough because I only bought two. And I was right, I didn't have enough. I bought a lot of flowers and herbs this year. So this seed organizer is gonna be just dedicated to my flowers and to my herbs. So if you're interested in this as well, I'll link it down in the description box so you can go check one out. If you are interested in the Container Garden Small Space Garden Challenge, this is a seed collection where these seeds thrive in containers and small spaces. I've already done a live where I went in depth into each one of these seeds, so I'm not gonna go into depth today. So I'll link that live down in the description box. And the hashtag is going to be patio to plate. I think it's absolutely perfect. Thank you to everyone who gave me just amazing, amazing hashtag ideas. I wanna be able to follow that hashtag on Instagram so we can create a community over there where we can follow each other and learn from each other and see how we're doing. One thing that Haas Tools is excellent at is they are great at seed starting equipment on their website they have a ton of extremely high quality seed starting equipment two of the biggest mistakes i made in starting my seeds indoors the last two years were not having good seed starting equipment this is a massive investment in these seeds and if you don't have the proper equipment then your seeds are not going to thrive and your seedlings are not going to thrive and that was my problem so this year I did completely upgrade my seed starting equipment. I haven't done a video on my grow light setup yet. There will be a video on that. But so now let's start opening these seed packets and seeing what I got. I purchased some of these quite some time ago so I don't remember every single variety that is in this packet. Some of these varieties that I purchased, I know that I purchased because they thrive in containers because I am going big on container gardening and small space gardening this year. And so even though I have all these seed packets, I know that there's some goodies in here for those as well. So, oh my goodness. This is a lot of seeds. The first seed company we're gonna talk about is MI Gardener. His seeds are $2 a seed packet and it's free shipping over $12. So this year what I did is I started my seed shopping at MI Gardener because the seeds are so affordable and then I went and shopped what I could not find there or what was sold out there at other seed companies. First seeds we're gonna be growing from MI Gardener are these Oregon snow peas. I bought four packages and they have 40 seeds approximately each. The last two years, I did not realize there was a difference between shelling peas and just like a sweet pea or a snap pea. And I grew only shelling peas last year. Shelling peas, the outer shell of the pea is really tough and you're growing it for the inside pea part, like if you were to buy frozen peas at the grocery store. Well, that is a lot of work. It took me about six hours to shell my peas and I got one gallon Ziploc bag full of peas. And so for my growing space and my time, that's not worth it. So I want a higher yield. And so I wanna grow something where I can eat the pod and the peas. So these Oregon giant snow peas are something that I can do that. These freeze really well. I love to saute them in just a little bit of garlic and butter and they are fantastic. So that's the first thing. The next seed is a jade bean. These were, extremely prolific last year i only grew one packet of these and i got more beans from these and they were super tender they stayed tender even when they got really long and they're a bush bean variety so you don't need to trellis these and i grew them in a pot and they grew fantastic in a pot so i bought six packages of approximately 25 seeds i'm going to be growing these in pots and i'm going to be growing them in my raised beds and they are just fantastic i grew provider bush beans last year and I was not honestly a big fan of them. They got really tough if you didn't harvest them in time. 
and these stayed really, really tender. I'm gonna be trying to grow more dried beans this year. I am going to attempt to grow navy beans. I bought four packages of navy beans. These are a bush bean variety, so I don't need to trellis these. And the other dried bean we are gonna try, and look how cool these are. These are called Calypso beans, and they look like a whale. I think they just, an orca whale, they're black and white and speckled. They are 25 seeds approximately per seed packet, and I bought two of those. These are a 70 to 90 day variety, and oh wow, the um, navy beans are 90 to 100 days. I did not realize that they were such a longer. I grew a ton of black beans last year, and one of the really cool things about growing dried beans is you don't have to do anything to preserve them. Once they dry on the plant and you harvest them, they can stay in your pantry dry. It's not like a tomato or something where you have to bring it in and do something with it to preserve it. It just stays preserved. And that is kind of cool about the next things we're gonna be talking about is something that you don't have to preserve after it's grown, it preserves itself, our winter squash. I love growing winter squash. So we have a, a few varieties here that we're gonna be growing. I grew this variety last year and I grew so many of these. I probably got eight or nine or 10 of them. I don't know. These are Cinderella pumpkins, very prolific, super easy to grow. I did not grow them the year before and I probably will always grow these in my garden again. You get a lot of produce for not that much space. Even if you're growing in raised beds, I planted them on the outside of my raised bed and I let them grow out into the walkways and I'm gonna be doing that again this year. I bought some Jack B. Little pumpkin seeds. I want to decorate my house for fall with these pumpkins and that's why I bought them. I bought Long Island cheese. This is another pumpkin that is supposed to be pretty prolific and a good eating pumpkin. And I've never grown this one before so I'm excited to try this variety. This pumpkin I grew last year and it was sweet meat. It is a whitish bluish pumpkin. I have approximately 20 seeds in here. And this is only a 95 day to maturity pumpkin versus the other ones we were talking about were about 100 to 110 days to maturity. And then I'm growing this variety. I'm not sure how to say it, but I'm growing it because I wanna decorate my front porch with white pumpkins because I love white pumpkins and I just thought these were really beautiful. So we're gonna to attempt to grow some white pumpkins. I've never grown white pumpkins before. So that is it for the winter squash. Let's talk about some carrots, three varieties of carrots from MI Gardener this year. And these all have different maturity dates. The first one is a Parisian carrot and it's a 55 day to maturity. I thought that these would be great in my green stock. I can link that down below if you're interested in what that is. It's a vertical garden and for the container gardening because they are all stunted. So this is a 55 day to maturity carrot. And this next carrot, is also a stunted carrot, and this is a 70 day to maturity carrot. And the last one I got was this ox heart carrot, and this is a 90 day to maturity carrot. So the cool thing about these three varieties is they mature at different times. So I'm gonna plant all of these carrots at the exact same time. This one takes 55 days, this one takes 70, and this one takes 90. So I'm gonna have a continuous harvest of carrots without having to do succession planting, meaning I plant carrots one day, I wait two weeks, I plant more carrots, I wait two weeks, I plant more carrots to have a succession of planting. This is gonna give me that longer harvest without having to plant and think about succession planting because I'm very busy and sometimes that can be hard for me to work out the scheduling in my head. I, I just kind of garden as I go, so I think it'll be nice to be able to plant three different varieties the same day and have different maturity dates on this. So that is why I bought those. I'm going to attempt to grow shallots for the first time this year. I love shallots. And I got some American flag leeks. The first year I gardened, I grew leeks really well. Last year's leeks did not turn out very well, so we're gonna see if we can grow better leeks this year. I really need to start my leeks and shallots inside as soon as possible. I probably should have started my onions probably two weeks ago, but it is what it is and we're here today, so we'll do it when we get to it. I purchased four different varieties of tomatoes through MI Gardener. The first one I bought is because of the name. It's called a 42 day tomato. This is a determinate tomato, meaning it'll only get to a certain size. And it says 42 days tomato is one of the world's earliest tomatoes and has the most excellent flavor. 
small one ounce fruits, bright red and very few seeds. I'm gonna grow this in a pot and this is gonna be part of my container garden challenge for myself. And it says 42 days to harvest, which is crazy for a tomato because I'm gonna tell you the next few varieties are 90 days. Each of them is a 90 day to maturity. So this is gonna be a really fun one and I cannot wait to grow this one with you guys. The next one I got is called an Opoca tomato. I'm probably not saying that correctly. This is a paste style tomato, meaning it's good for making sauces because it doesn't have very many seeds and it's not super watery. This is an indeterminate tomato. The next three varieties are indeterminate tomatoes, meaning they continue to grow and produce fruit until they either get riddled with disease or it gets too cold and they stop producing fruit. But a determinate tomato will only get a certain size. So that is kind of the difference between those. The Opoca tomato says it's a Polish heirloom producing large tomatoes with very minimal seeds and gel, making this tomato a go-to for authentic tomato sauces. So I thought I would try that. I've always had really good luck with just a classic Roma tomato and I'm gonna grow a lot of those. I personally have never had good luck with San Marzano's or Amish paste tomatoes. The next two varieties are a big slicing tomato. I have an affinity for big slicing tomatoes. I love growing the mortgage lifters. The first one is this old German tomato. It's a striped tomato. It's kind of an orange color. It says this massive bicolor tomato produces jaw dropping fruit size. So that's pretty exciting on that one. And then the next one is big rainbow German. And this one I'm excited about because it says these tomatoes live up to their name. Giant tomatoes weighing regularly between one and two pounds. These plants are more disease resistant than other bicolored tomatoes. So I'm always looking for a variety that is disease resistant. Now the next thing is something I've never grown before and that is a melon. This is a smaller melon. It says it produces three to seven fruits throughout the growing season. And this is an enchanting heirloom, is uncommon in North America, but is a staple in France. So we're gonna attempt this. I purchased another melon through another seed company, which we'll get to when we get to it. But I think that this just sounded really good. So I don't buy cantaloupes or honeydews in the grocery store really, but I think that if I had a warm melon right off the vine, I probably would really enjoy that. It just sounds good in my head, but we'll see if we can get this to produce any fruit for us. This right here is an example where I on accident hit three <laughs> instead of just one. I did not mean to buy three packets of this. This is a hot pepper that's pea sized. It says these pea sized peppers are known as the first very hot pepper variety called the mother of all peppers because of its ancient origin. Rich with a smoky, earthy spice. I want to pickle these in vinegar. That's my goal with these. Or maybe make hot sauce or something. But I'm excited because I have three packages. I probably don't need three packages, so maybe I'll join one of those seed swaps or something and I can share the love with those. But that is one of the good things about if you do that with MI Gardener, you're not out too much because they're $2 a seed pack. The next pepper is an ancho grande pepper, and then big Jim pepper. These are a medium spice, and this is a sweet pepper called giant Marconi pepper. So we kind of have all the different heat varieties here. I do have more peppers in other seed packets coming up. I bought some spring broccoli rob. I have not had the best luck growing broccoli, and so I thought I would try a broccoli rob variety so that is what I bought with that. I think it is a little bit easier to grow if from my understanding than trying to grow a big head of broccoli. So these we get to start pretty soon. I have kale, I have premier kale and also blue curl kale. I love both these varieties. I've grown both of these varieties and I've had very good luck with them. I love growing kale because it freezes excellent. You don't have to do much to preserve it. I don't blanch it, I don't do anything. I pick it off the plant throw it in a bag, throw it in the freezer, and I cook with it. We have two different varieties of lettuce. We're gonna try growing these in our green stock. We have freckled romaine lettuce and Paris Island cause romaine. One of my goals this year is to eat a ton of fresh salads and greens. And one thing I love to put in fresh salads are herbs. I think that just brightens up a salad. I bought six packages of cilantro. I've had a little bit of a difficult time growing cilantro and so I wanted to make sure I had enough seed packets 
to try to attempt to grow better cilantro this year and that is something that I am going to try to succession plant so that I can have a longer harvest of cilantro and these are called slow bolt cilantro so they aren't supposed to go to flower bolting just means that they go to flower in the heat and that can be one of the struggles of trying to grow cilantro one of my all-time favorite herbs this is fantastic if you've never tried this is lemon basil it tastes like lemon and basil combined and it is phenomenal i have a hard time finding this as a seedling start so if you want to try to grow lemon basil get your hands on some seeds basil is really easy to grow and this is so good so good so good curled chervil i've never eaten chervil it's an herb i've never grown it but it's basically a french parsley and it says it's wonderful herbs for soups, stews, salads, and more. It grows in stalks that resemble celery, but is much easier to grow, edible at any stage, and you can harvest it right away or wait until it grows bigger. So we're gonna try growing some chervil together. Okay, one of my absolute favorite things that we grew last year were tomatillos. I made some homemade salsa verde and it is my husband and I's absolute favorite thing that I preserved last year. I grew two tomatillo plants last year and I want to grow at least four if not five tomatillo plants this year. I want a lot more tomatillos. They are so good. So good. And then just a classic Utah tall celery. I've grown this two years in a row and it's done really well. This is something that I need to get started right away. I probably already should have started my celery because that takes a long time to germinate. And then it looks like they give you a free salad mix. This is a free seed packet. It just says salad bowl mix. So it's probably a bunch of different greens mixed in here. That won't go to waste. We will definitely use it. The last few things that I got from MI Gardener, I think I was click happy as well because I bought a couple multiple of the same thing, but that's okay. I am really, really, really going to work on trying to grow a lot more flowers this year. Last year was my first year really diving into growing any flowers and I, the bug bit me. I am so excited to grow even more flowers this year. I grew zinnias, calendula, coneflower, which is echinacea, but my echinacea did not bloom because I didn't realize sometimes if you start it from seed the first year it doesn't bloom. So hopefully it blooms this year because that is a perennial and nasturtium. So I am going to try to grow a bunch more varieties and the zinnias that I grew last year I bought a variety pack at Dollar Tree and I now zinnias are my favorite plant but instead of just growing random varieties this year I made conscious choices of which ones I want to grow and I want to know which ones I'm growing because I love zinnias they're probably one of my new favorite flowers first thing i am going to attempt to grow two different varieties of carnations and these i need to start very quickly these are 130 to 140 day to maturity i did not realize they take that long and so i need to get both these orange ones and these white ones started as soon as possible so as soon as i start my onions and celery these are going to be started as well I got three different varieties of straw flowers and these are ones where I on accident clicked the button twice and I bought two packages of each. I got vintage white, purple red, and copper red. And the reason I wanted to grow straw flowers is they dry out really well, hence the name straw flowers. They already are basically dry to the touch when they grow and I want to try to make some dried flower bouquets to go into the fall to decorate my house with. So that's what I got those. And these are supposed to be super easy to grow. So I'm curious to see how this goes. I've never grown them before. And the last seed packet I got from MI Gardener are this Zinnia Envy. It says this is a vivid, bright green variety that will add a unique touch to your flower garden. So that is all my MI Gardener seeds. That was a lot of seeds to get through. And I just have to say that this is really really getting me jump started in my gardening bug the next seed company that i purchased seeds through are seeds for generations i met them when i went to the homesteaders of america conference a lot of seed companies buy their seeds from seed growers and sell them but seeds for generations they do a lot of their own seed saving they do purchase some seeds from outside sources but what they are known for is growing and selling their own seeds which is pretty phenomenal 
I think what I'm gonna do instead of organizing them, we're just gonna go through them together and we'll be surprised together because I don't remember everything I bought. The first one, very, very, very dark purple basil. I've never grown purple basil. I've seen it in other people's gardens and it's absolutely stunning. And it's also really beautiful in flower bouquets. So I bought it to eat and then I bought it once it goes to flower itself, I'm gonna put this in bouquets. The next thing I bought, which I've seen in so many people's gardens because it is excellent as a pollinator, it draws in those bees and those pollinator bugs, is borage. I think I'm saying that correctly. And I see it in everyone's garden and I feel like my garden is not a true garden without it. So that's why I went ahead and I purchased some borage seeds. And then we are going to try to grow cauliflower this is a self blanching cauliflower i grew cauliflower my first year that i purchased from starts and i got these massive heads of cauliflower and last year my cauliflower were this big so we're gonna try to grow cauliflower again and i thought i would try this variety i got dinosaur kale that's what this is i love dinosaur kale kale is also one of my chickens absolute favorite snacks and so i try to grow enough kale so that i can supplement their diet with kale in the summer because in the summer they aren't allowed to free range my whole property because they could get into the garden. So I try to grow a lot of kale so that I can pick a bunch of it and give it to them as well. Going along with that, this is a dwarf blue kale and I thought that I'm gonna try to grow this in some containers and I'm also gonna try to grow this in my green stock. So that is why I bought this dwarf blue curled kale. I wanted to try to grow a couple different varieties of leeks. So this is a different variety than the one I bought from MI Gardener. This is King Richard leek. I love leeks. If you've never tried leeks, go buy some at the grocery store. They're a very sweet, sweet onion flavor. I got a tri-colored lettuce, dwarf nasturtiums. Nasturtiums are probably one of my most favorite flowers to grow. Their leaves are round and it's just a very unique flower. And this is a dwarf variety, dwarf jewel mix. So I wanna try growing this in some containers and in my green stock. Cipollini onions. I got these Cipollini onions when I was part of a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. You basically become a member of a farm and they were phenomenal onions. They're super sweet. They're really flat and round and oblong. So I'm gonna attempt to grow them. There are probably, it, it says there's approximately 100 seeds in here. So we'll see how we do. I bought two different varieties of parsley. This is a curled parsley. And then I also got an Italian flat leaf parsley. Parsley I grew really well last year. I got more than a year's supply of parsley, so I wanna to try to do that again this year. I got a chocolate bell pepper style. This is a sweet pepper. And then I got a red Marconi pepper. And I think this is a sweet pepper as well. Yes, sweet red pepper from Italy has somewhat elongated fruit up to 12 inches long and three inches across. Early variety with high yield, ideal for frying. So that is gonna be really good. And then I purchased three different varieties of tomatoes from Seeds for Generations. I had excellent luck with beefsteak tomatoes last year, so I wanted to make sure I grew quite a few of those this year. And then I bought this one because of the name. The name is Moneymaker Tomato, so I figured if you have a farm and you're growing a lot of tomatoes, that's probably where the name came from. And oh, it says it's a favorite for greenhouse variety which I don't have a greenhouse, but I bought it because I like the name of it. So we'll see how those go. I will attempt to grow those. And then I did buy some more Roma tomato seeds because I needed some more Roma tomato seeds. These are, like I mentioned earlier, I've had the best luck with them. Roma is a standard Italian canning and paste tomato. It's compact vines produce three inch long, pear shaped, thick walled, solid fruits with few seeds, high wilt resistance. So that's good. So I'm excited, I have 25 seeds in there. And the last three things I bought from Seeds for Generations are three different winter squash varieties. The first one is a butternut squash. The second one is a Jardel winter squash. I grew this variety last year. I only got one because I think I only planted one plant and I hope I get a bunch more of this. It is a blue pumpkin, but the inside, and it even says here, don't let this green gray pumpkin fool you. Inside holds a surprise a sweet orange flesh, great for eating, storaging, and decoration. This pumpkin was so orange on the inside, it was almost like a yam sweet potato, like that, those 
can't, what are those called? Those really jeweled sweet potatoes, those really, really, really orange ones. That's what this one looked like inside and it was not watery at all. It was very, very dry. A Cinderella pumpkin is less watery than just your typical like jack-o'-lantern pumpkin, but this was hardly had any moisture in it at all, which is perfect when you're wanting to make a pie or a quick bread because you don't want all that extra moisture. You want just that really good flavored meat. So I'm gonna grow quite a few of these hopefully this next year. Another winter squash I got is a blue Hubbard squash. The blue Hubbard squash says with this hard skin, making it perfect for storage, generally between 12 and 40 pounds, they get huge produce a yellow orange flesh, great for baking. These are fantastic. I grew this my first year gardening. I didn't grow this last year, but I grew this my first year. So I'm excited to have these. I love growing winter squash because you don't have to do anything to store them. You wipe them down. I just wipe them down with a little bit of vinegar to get any mold spores off them and you throw them in your pantry. And I still have a ton of winter squash from last year. So this is my Seeds for Generations haul and I, I'm super excited about that. One of the things I'm most excited about are those beefsteak tomatoes and those purple basil. So I know that I've put in two orders for Baker Creek, which is rareseeds.com. And I have three packages from them. So I'm not exactly sure how, I don't know if they ship things, you know, different or what, but I'm not sure why I have three packages from them. So let's open these up and see what we got. Cause they're, these are hefty. There's a lot of seeds in these packets. Oh my gosh. I just sliced the top of that. Let me go get some tape to close that. Friends, I know why I had three packages from Baker Creek show up to my door, even though I thought I only ordered two seed orders from them. And that is because I ordered the same order twice. So I have my original, this was my original order here. And then I saw a couple varieties on other people's seed haul videos and I thought I had to have them. So then I placed another order, which was this one. And I was surprised when this one showed up at my doorstep, but I didn't want to open them till I opened them with you. And I realized I placed that second order twice. I know at one point I was having trouble putting in my address and so I don't know, I don't know, but I'm not upset about it because I got a lot of really good stuff. So let me show you what the vegetables I got and then I just laid out all my flowers over on my counter over there because there's so many of them. We're going to go through them really quickly and I'll be able to show you all the beautiful varieties I got because I got some pretty cool stuff and I'm pretty excited about it. So the first thing I got is this Kajari melon. I've seen two people talk about this online. It's a really small melon. It says collected by Joseph Simcox in India. An unusually yet beautiful coppered red fruit striped with green and cream. Very sweet, pale flesh. The next two things I got is two different varieties of broccoli broth. This one is a 50 day variety and it says this is a tender, tasty Asian green known as edible stalks and flower. Oh, maybe it's not. Broccoli Rob. It looks like it. It's called Choi Shun 50 Day. So, so maybe it's not. Can be planted both in spring and late summer for fall harvest. So we're going to try that. And then this is Broccoli Rob. And this is a 90 day. It says very high, highly yielding, deep nutritious impact flavored Broccoli Rob. Oh, wow. Plants average two to three feet high. So that's pretty exciting. I'm excited to try that. Like I said, I'm not trying to grow any head broccoli because I just didn't have good luck with that. And then I got this honey nut butternut squash, just another variety of butternut squash, but this is a tiny variety. It says that they are the best tasting squash of all time. Fruit reaches four to five inches, and I've seen this online. This kind of has a cult following. There's another variety of tomatoes in here that has a cult following and they're just supposed to be a very, very sweet, delicious squash. Bell pepper, it's a sweet pepper type. It's called King of the North, and it's supposed to be an early variety. I have struggled with growing peppers, and so I'm gonna see if I can get this one to grow. I have tried growing Tabascos two years in a row, and I have failed. The first year, I had no grow lights, and my seedlings did not thrive. The second year, I grew them. They plants looked pretty good. I planted them out and we had a frost and I killed them. And so I could not find Tabasco pepper starts at the grocery store or the bug box stores. So I'm gonna really try hard to grow some Tabasco peppers and make some Tabasco hot sauce. 
I bought a zucchini. This is a long white, I guess it's technically just a squash. It doesn't, oh yeah, it is a long white zucchini. It's a 45 day to 55 day bush variety. This one, I don't know why I bought it. It's called the Purple Rain. It's a, oh, I do. It says it's a tiny and compact three foot plant. And that is why I bought it. Cause we're gonna try growing this in a container. I bought another beef steak variety. This is true beef steak. This tomato is supposed to have a cult following. I've never grown it. I've never tried it. It's a Paul Robeson tomato. It's a Russian variety lovingly named for the famous opera singer, Paul Robeson. Amazingly flavored. It is so distinctive, sweet, and smoky. Seven to 10 ounce fruits. So we're gonna try it. The last tomato I bought is the watermelon beef steak. So this is another beef steak variety. And this is supposed to be a super sweet I also got Chinese red noodle long beans. I attempted to grow these last year and I could not get them to germinate. And it even says on the seed packet, it's overpacked because it has a low germination rate. So we'll see if we can get those to grow again this year. But they look really beautiful when I've seen them in other people's gardens online. I got two different varieties of green beans. I've always wanted to try the Blue Lake bush beans. I've never tried them. I've heard great things about them. And then I also bought these beans. These contender beans were the beans that I grew in 2020. They were my favorite green bean in 2020, but I could not get my hands on them in 2021. I'm gonna grow them this year and I'm gonna compare them to the jade beans because the jade beans were my favorite ones last year. Baker Creek always sends free seeds. So I got four free seed packets. The first one is a wasabi radish. I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy eating those because radishes are not my favorite, so I don't know if I'm gonna like a wasabi one. I'm excited to try this though. These are a carrot, a very old French variety, it says, 10 to 12 inches long. I've never grown these Saint Valerie carrots before, so I'm definitely gonna grow those. I got a cucumber. It says this variety is very popular in the Mediterranean, so I might give that a try. And then this, I don't know if I'm gonna try growing it. It says it's newly, it says it's a newly developed Japanese heirloom variety. I've never eaten this, so I probably should grow it just to try it. But my goal this year is to try to grow a staples garden, meaning I'm growing the things that I eat all the time and not trying to experiment with a bunch of different things I don't normally eat. But we'll see if we give that a try. Let's go over and look at all the flowers I bought. I got six varieties of zinnias. I have three of the Queen Lime series. I have Queen Lime Blush. Queen Lime Orange, Queen Lime Red, Queen Lime, and then I got Purple Prince, and this really cool two-tone orange one. And another flower that I'm excited to try for the first time is Rebecca. I got Cherry Brandy and Cherokee Sunset, and I think those are gonna be really stunning in the garden in the fall. Two things I cannot believe that I actually purchased are some dandelions. I got a pink dandelion and a Japanese white dandelion. You can eat the leaves of these. I also bought these to add a little pop of color in the garden and these are supposed to be very vigorous and easy to grow because they basically are a weed. I bought two different varieties of echinacea. How pretty is this? Last year I planted just the traditional purple echinacea and when I saw these two varieties, I couldn't pass them up. And so I don't know if I will see these blooms this year because the echinacea I planted last year did not bloom, but I thought these were really beautiful. And these are perennial, so these will come back year after year. So if I don't see it this year, no worries. I will see these in the previous years to come. I bought three varieties of nasturtiums. Nasturtiums are one of my favorite flowers to grow in the garden because they have these really cool round leaves. You don't pick these to make bouquets out of them, but they just add a punch of color in the garden. I grew these Alaska Red Shade last year, but I've never seen nasturtiums that are these beautiful pink shades. This is Cherry Rose Jewel, and this is Tip Top Rose, and I cannot wait to have these in the garden. I think I'm gonna plant a few of these in my green stock, in containers, and I want them pillowing out of my raised beds. Last but not least, I am gonna to attempt to grow some snapdragons this year, and this is Black Prince Snapdragon, and I just think this is gonna be really, really beautiful, and so we're gonna to attempt to grow that. I have gotten the flower bug when it comes to seeds. I would love to start a flower farm. I'm not gonna start a flower farm, but 
Just the excuse to have to grow all those flowers just sounds really fun and appealing to me. My first year gardening, the reason I didn't grow very many flowers is because I was like, I'm growing food. That's what I'm growing, you know, I, that's my goal. But then I realized you need those flowers to draw in those pollinators. You're gonna have more of an abundant harvest if you have the beautiful flowers drawing in those pollinators, pollinating your zucchini plants, your tomato plants, your pepper plants. And so even though you think you're giving up space for flowers, you aren't giving up space because you are gonna be increasing your yield on the plants that you're growing. And I'm just really excited for garden season 2022 and all the flowers are gonna be growing. I just, I cannot wait. Cause I was surprised how well some of those flowers that I grew last year and a lot of them, like I said, were mixes. So I wasn't picking very specific varieties and colors that I wanted because I didn't even know if I could grow zinnias. I didn't even know if that was a possibility of something that I could do. And now that I have a little bit of confidence under my belt, I just know that we can do it together and I just cannot wait. So I wanna talk about this next seed company that I bought seed from, and this is called Territorial Seeds. They are a local company to me. This is the next company we're gonna talk about. They do both hybrid and heirloom, and they do save and grow some of their own seeds and sell that, and then they do purchase some in to sell out. But I've been very happy with them because they're in Forest Grove, Oregon, which is not too far from me. I bought three different varieties of snow peas. This is kind of like I was thinking through the carrots with the different maturity dates. I'm gonna plant them all out on the same day. The little white snow pea matures in 30 days, which is crazy fast. And I'm gonna plant those out along with the same day as the little purple snow peas. These mature in 50 to 55 days. And the sweet horizon peas, these are another snow pea, these mature in 60 to 65 days. So I can plant all these out on the same day and I'm gonna have a harvest for a longer period of time just based on the maturity dates on these. The next thing I bought through Territorial Seeds are some pelleted F1 Speedo carrots. These are a hybrid carrot and these are supposed to mature very quickly. And I bought these because Pelleted seeds are easier to plant. A pelleted seed just means they put a little bit of clay coating around it and they make it a lot easier to plant. Carrot seeds are so small. And so last year I planted pelleted seeds for the first time and I've been very happy with them. I also bought a Nepoli carrot. This is another hybrid carrot and this is maturing in 55 days. I love buying carrot seeds for some reason because I also bought a Musico carrot and these mature in 90 days. So I'm gonna plant both of these carrots out on the same time and I'm gonna have different maturity dates on these. I'm trying to make gardening a little bit easier for myself because I'm so busy that sometimes it can be hard for me to get out there on a very set schedule to plant succession planting of the same variety. And I'm so new to gardening too. I am trying to grow different varieties of things so that I can try to find my favorite variety. And then I just know that that's my favorite variety and that's what I grow. So it's kind of a mix of trying to make gardening easier on myself and also trying to experiment and figure out which varieties I prefer. I wanted to grow some pole beans, so I am gonna try these Vortex. These are a French pole bean. I want to attempt to grow glass gem corn. This is probably the prettiest corn on the market out there. It's stunning. And so I bought a package of those. I'm doing the same thing with these two hybrid cauliflowers. The Candied Charm matures in 65 days and the Veronica matures in 85 days. So we're gonna try to increase our cauliflower harvest. I bought some poppy flowers. I've never grown poppies before, so this is gonna be a fun thing to grow. This is called Pot Apeno, and it's a very compact jalapeno plant that's supposed to grow very, very well in containers. So we're gonna attempt to grow this. This is a hybrid jalapeno plant. I also got an orange spice jalapeno plant, a Fresh Bites yellow pepper plant. Listen to this, it says, 85 days produces a colorful plant for your kitchen window. You can grow this in a six inch pot, and it grows two and a quarter inch long wide shaped yellow peppers. That's why I bought this one for the container challenge and a purple zebra pepper. Johnny's is the next seed company that I ordered seeds from. They are a huge seed company. They are an employee owned seed company. They help home gardeners and commercial farmers. You can buy thousands of seeds of one variety. They, they have huge, quantities that you can purchase from. So I only bought a few varieties from them. They definitely have a ton of hybrid varieties 
And some of the plants that I want to grow hybrid are this year are corn. I did buy that one package of glass gem corn. The first time I tried to grow an heirloom variety of sweet corn, it did absolutely nothing. So we are going to attempt to grow this hybrid bicolored SH2 corn. And it's supposed to mature in I think like 70 days. So I'm pretty excited about trying this. I bought six packages of this, so we'll see how it goes. The next thing I got were my onion seeds. I bought Walla Walla onions, which I grew last year and they did really well. The red onion seeds we're gonna grow are Rosa di Melano seeds. And then I got some Patterson F1. These are a hybrid. These are it's supposed to be a very good storage onion. I bought a huge pack of 250 seeds. This, these are sugar snap peas, pretty traditional. You can buy these anywhere. The reason I wanted to go ahead and buy them with Johnny Seeds is you can just buy a really big pack. That is the thing about Johnny Seeds. If you want to buy, you know, 5,000 seeds of something, you can do that no problem. And I wanted to buy just one big pack instead of a bunch of little packs. I had trouble growing my yellow squash and yellow zucchinis last year. I was trying to grow heirloom varieties. So this year I'm going to be growing some hybrid varieties to see if that helps. I went with two different yellow zucchinis. One is actually a yellow squash. It's yellow fin hybrid F1 and then golden glory, which is a yellow zucchini. And then I purchased Dunja and it's supposed to mature extremely quickly. I think this was like a 45 day to maturity zucchini. Another thing I went ahead and bought was scarlet kale. I could have bought this anywhere, but I forgot to buy it with my other seeds. So I went ahead and purchased it through Johnny seeds. This is just a purple kale. It's really beautiful. Then I purchased a few packages of different types of spinach. Nothing that I couldn't have purchased anywhere else, but I was on their website and I had forgotten to buy it. And I did want to go ahead and try to do some hybrid cabbages this year because I want to try to have some storage cabbage. So I bought storage number four, which is a green cabbage and primo vintage cabbage, which is another green cabbage. And I think I bought a red cabbage too. A copper red straw flower. These are the same flowers as the ones I got from Emma Gardner, but it's a red color. When I was wanting to buy them at Emma Gardner, they were already sold out. And then I got a forever silver status, which is a, another white flower that I plan to use. I hope you enjoyed seeing my seed haul. It was massive. It was way bigger than I intended. I did not realize I purchased this many seeds until I just opened all these boxes with you, but I can't say I'm upset about it. I'm, I'm honestly thrilled and grateful that this is sitting on my dining room table right now. And it just means that this year's garden hopefully is going to be abundant and beautiful. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sit down and I'm going to organize all my flowers and herbs into this container. So don't forget, I will link this along with all these seed companies that I ordered my seeds through down in the description box. So if you're interested in them, you can go check them out. And I will link a video right here where we organize our seeds together so you can see how the seeds look in one of these containers. And if you wanna see what my garden looked like last year and a big harvest we did together, I'll link that video right here. You can go enjoy those. I hope you're excited for garden season 2022. Don't forget the hashtag is patio to plate for our small space container gardening challenge. I wanna see what you're growing. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.